Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS and force perkin on PC. I'm going to start by optimizing Windows, and after that we will go inside of the game. You have a lot of different parameters that you can change. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphic setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's gonna show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have uh, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to control panel, open it, go to manage 3D setting and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS. Uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hertz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring. Uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU, so I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue, but if you're playing on a laptop, 
really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's going to make sure that it optimize your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divide it by 2. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2%, 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game, first of all, for the resolution, make sure that you're playing your native resolution. So depending on your monitor, just go with 2K, 4K, 1080p. Also, make sure that you unlock your FPS at 120. So this is the maximum frame rate. I'm not using VSync because I want the less input lag possible. But again, it's a solo game. If you don't like those tiering, uh, you can definitely activate your VSync or you can use other technology like G-Sync or FreeSync uh, to remove that. Screen mode, I really recommend to play full screen. I had a lot of issue with the borderless, some random drops in my FPS and stuttering. So don't use other mode than that. After that, for the graphics, we're going to go up over there. First of all, if you want to modify your graphic, you will need to select custom, as you can see over there. I don't recommend to use VRS or dynamic resolution. You don't want something that change your image quality on the fly, depending on the amount of FPS that you want to do. So just remove those. Model memory and texture memory it really depend on the amount of VRAM that you have. So just make sure that you have 10% MT for your VRAM. In my case, it's not a, a, a huge issue. But if you're playing with a, a 4 gig VRAM, uh, GPU, 3 gig, 2 gig, uh, definitely you will need to lower your te texture memory and your model memory. After that image quality, you have two technology that is available for you. So Fidelity FX2 from AMD and the DLSS if you have an RTX card. Honestly, you should definitely do some testing with those one. They are pretty good. You can expect like 15 to 25% boost in your FPS. And if you're playing this game in 4K, even 2K, it's really rough for a computer. So definitely look at those. I recommend to use quality at sharpness 0.7, but it really depends again on your resolution. So sharpness, just do some testing. It would question of preference. But I really recommend to use quality because balance and even performance, not a huge fan. When you're static in the game, it looks good. But when you start moving fast, it feels a lot... It, very very blurry so that's why i recommend to go with quality and it's pretty much the same thing with super resolution if you want to use it use quality again and just adjust your sharpness to make sure that you have a proper visual so we're gonna put it back at off for render resolution just make sure that you're using 100 person don't downscale the game it will look very blurry make sure that you're using the lss or super resolution it will be a lot better model quality you can definitely run a standard low versus standard i just saw one percent different in my fps Texture filtering, you can definitely uh, look at your um, amount of VRAM. If you have no issue with your VRAM, just stay at high uh, or d uh, downgrade it a little bit if you're struggling with your uh, memory usage. Reflection, this one is really important. Don't go at high, you will see crazy drop in your FPS. And also, if you're limited with your computer, you're playing on like, I don't know, with a GTX 980, something like that. Just remove reflection. You will see a big improvement in the stability of your FPS. So it really depends on what rig, what type of rig that you have. Motion blur and depth of fill, I recommend to just remove them. You will have better visibility and no effect on your FPS, but it's just better for gaming. 
Fog quality and cloud quality, those one, if you're putting at low, uh, you will gain like 15% if I compare versus I. But the game looks very off and flat if you're going low and low. So I recommend to go with something like standard like this and cloud quality at low if you're limited in your FPS. And if you have like a, just a decent rig, go standard and standard. Shadow quality not a huge impact in your visual honestly so i recommend to go with low because you can get a nice 8 to 10 percent boost over there so that's why i recommend to go with low uh, fog quality is a game changer in your image quality but shadow you don't necessarily see it at low so that's why i recommend to go standard standard and low for your shadow ray trace shadow i recommend to just put this one at off and also the ray trace ambient inclusion for sure, if you're limited with your GPU, uh, you have like an RTX 2060, don't go too crazy with ray tracing. It will tank your FPS. After that, you have the ambient inclusion. For sure, if you compare off to I, you can expect a nice 8% boost in your FPS. But honestly, the game at off looks very flat again. You're not playing an FPS uh, eSport game. So I recommend to just go with standard with this one. Uh, it's the best balance for image quality and FPS. Anti-aliasing, if you're limited with your um, computer again, resources, go with FXAA, not bad. It's not too blurry and it does the job. Uh, if you don't really care about aliasing, definitely just removing it. The game will look more clear and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You will gain more FPS. Not a huge fan, honestly, of Temporal AA. It looks very blurry in this game. So just do some things, testing and select the one that you want to use. But of course, it will impact your FPS. This is pretty much it for my full spoken guide. If you have any question about it, just comment in the YouTube section, post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.